What's happening, YouTube? It's your old pal Octavius Rex here. Yeah, I'm only working with the one light tonight. Um, the other light's fine. I just, I don't know. I've got a laxed attitude tonight. I'm late to the party. I had planned to do several videos leading up to this video in and of itself, but uh, I got sidetracked. Well, t l let me be honest with you. I pulled out an old classic I've been meaning to revisit, GameCube's Luigi's Mansion, and I have to say I'm hooked all over again. And I seriously cannot wait for the 3DS uh, sequel called Dark of the Moon that's set to come out in spring of this year. This year being that I'm recording after midnight, and it is now officially 2013. I decided I want to talk about positivity to start off the new year here. And how I really need to start trimming this mangy beard, although I've been told I, I grow a mean beard. There are some people who feel that it's a crime against nature whenever I shave all this off. But I digress. Because it we've myself included we've we've focused so much in most cases on on my old channel and on my new channel on negativity the negativity of current typically american society and while i stand by what i've talked about i don't really want to start off a, a year that i feel we have a lot to feel optimistic about despite the financial cliff and all that stuff that's going on. And so, I don't know, call me old-fashioned. But I felt I've been beating on humanity quite a lot lately. Why not talk about the positivity? Because there have been positive developments, even amongst some of the worst of the things that have happened this year. So without further ado, let's let's get on to what we're doing right right now. I honestly never thought I would live to see the day that we would actually have a lot of answers to a lot of things. Um, or that technology would be growing in the leaps and bounds in which it is. There is a company now. Remember Virgin Airlines? Well, they have a new service that they are looking to unveil, and they're not the only ones, called Virgin Galactic. Yes, you heard that right. We have an airline company set up with, I'm guessing, a slightly less than experimental, because I don't think they'd want to slap their brand onto something that's likely to explode <laughs> and kill everybody. Um, onto a, a craft that is capable of taking people into space. I seriously had my doubts that I would live to see space tourism. And now it's extremely, extremely within our grasp. Obviously, I would say it's probably horrifically expensive at this point in time. But the fact that it exists is exciting. We have television, of all things, that is actually pushing us towards a Mars colony, which is possible, but it's going to take a lot of capital to sustain people on the Martian surface as it stands, let alone the idea of eventual terraforming, which National Geographic has explored, and it is more than scientifically sound, but will the planet take to the terraforming? That's a whole nother topic entirely. We have uh, physicists on one end trying to, or at least a few, who are actually trying to run a major experiment to try to figure out if all of this is even real. Because if all of our senses can be fooled, which tends to explain away 95% of all UFO, ghost, Bigfoot, so on and so forth sightings, then it could equally be put to the test or to the claim that 
if all of our senses can be fooled and have been fooled, then how do we know what is real? But then we have the other side of quantum physics, which is trying to figure out, are we even alone as a universe, as a, as a solar system, as, as a uh, reality, as a dimension? The M theory, which is the combination of no less than at least five different string theories, for lack of a better term, strung together to try to explain, not just go back to the Big Bang, but past it, past the point at which Einsteinian type of physics have no place, have no value, have nothing. And also to go even further into explaining our day-to-day -day reality in terms of things like the abnormalities of gravity and things of this nature. We've unlocked a gene that with, in combination with bad environments, which can include severe or at least abusive parenting, are what tend to separate a person who has uh, a possible defect in their MAOA gene sequence from becoming, uh, can determine whether somebody becomes a psychopath that is bad or a psychopath who could be a very effective business person. Thus, pushing the drive towards a more individualized psychology as well as biology, rather than a lot of the blanket terms that psychology, as much as I admire it, has been laboring under because we just didn't have enough data to support each and everything that, that, that's that been thrown our way. And blanket, um, blanket science for quite a while has served us well, but we're getting beyond that, and we're starting to really look at people in a more individualistic fashion. Sadly, it's a little bit slowed by things like, say, Sandy Hook, where we do have people who are wanting to look at everything except for the individual, but we're still making some progress in some areas on that, that front, and that's, that's something to be celebrate, uh, to celebrate. We're finding genes that have a more predictive ability to a lot of human beings. We may be able to, and again, I reiterate, if we do this correctly, then this doesn't have to lead to discrimination. But we're leading to a, a, a place where we're screening, we'd be screening people uh, or kids for possible problems that could arise later down in the road uh, down the road by looking at their genes by looking at their brains we've got technology that's that's pushing itself above and beyond including contact lenses and glasses that will someday be absolutely wearable computers where you'll be able to do facial recognition in parties, for instance, and know who are the big wigs, the guys you probably want to suck up to, and who are people you might want to do well to avoid. Uh, and, and the fact that we may eventually come to a, a point, a point my son I'm sure is eagerly waiting, where we have augmented reality to the point to where if you hate sunny days, you can just put on these glasses, walk outside, and there'll be enough of a simulation on the lenses with which for you to buy that you're actually walking through a day that is your kind of conditions of weather, despite how it might feel upon you. We've got cars uh, that are uh, getting touchscreen projections on the windshields for, like, say, the passenger sides or the back seats so that instead of the kids asking, are we there yet, they might be asking, hey, what was your score on uh, Angry Birds Star Wars? No, I'm not joking. Technology is climbing above and beyond. And we're coming to many other cliffs other than, say, uh, you know, fiscal cliffs. We've got robots that do need a little bit of help, but can be controlled via brainwaves for people who may not be able to do things for themselves. In other words, 
uh, old folks' homes may eventually become a thing of the past. We might actually have functional Android or partially controlled Android uh, helpers. We've got people who can wire, we got things we can wire into a person's brain that allows them to take a drink via a robot arm. Science fiction of the past is becoming science fact of our present, and it's amazing. Because between the stuff that the, that the, the, you know, the corporate sector is pushing for and the space travel, we're starting to pass by the roughest part of our civilization. That's right. We are slowly but surely clearing the main hurdles that keep us from being a class one type civilization, which is an important milestone, I might add, that is worth celebrating. Because if we make it to class one, we've beaten the odds. Because a lot of civilizations teeter on the knife's edge when going from class zero to a class one type civilization. Typically, a usual class zero might be one that is just so close to advancing, but they wipe themselves out through war or an uncontrolled disease or uh, unforeseen consequences. You know, we've got Americans that are living healthy, uh, living longer lives, although they're living sicker lives, which is a story eventually I will get to. But the fact that we're able to start to extend our lifetimes, extend ourselves. The fact that we've got a project that's on the books that's being funded by a lot of billionaires to create uh, an avatar program, which unfortunately I don't think the 2045 dead mar uh, deadline is going to be met. But people seriously investing in the next stage of what, what is dubbed as neo-humanity it is feasible. If anybody has been watching, you know, Mer Mercaro Kaku, I believe his name is, theoretical physicist, he's got a lot of impressive things that he's got people actually working on, such as the contact lenses that have computers built into them to make a, dis a heads up display, a HUD. I mean, heck, someday life might be a lot like video games, which may add to some ethical questions because some players, but it's very rare, cannot tell the difference between the virtual and real world. And if we were to be able to make a customizable HUD for our eyeballs, that could add to some issues for some people. But again, your average person knows the difference between a virtual world and a real world and is not likely to if they had a, an ability to customize life and create a heads-up display, even if it doesn't actually technically do anything, but a heads-up display for the eye to, to turn life into a video game, essentially, to some degree. There's so many applications and so much that's happening. Life and humanity has been advancing, and I, I feel that I've seen the biggest advances so far, or at least the biggest advances since I've started paying attention to things, uh, being last year. And considering that we've done a lot of legwork and a lot of muscle work last year, means this year, to some degree, is going to be a lot easier. Maybe we'll find out that M theory is absolutely correct, which is great, because it gives us an exit if and when in the billions of years from now that our universe just dies from one form of physics or another. Um, maybe, though, we'll find out we're a simulation, in which case we're technically under no major danger. Whoever's programming all of this stuff can just make sure that the universe doesn't destroy itself as physics says that it should. There's just so much to think about, so much to contemplate. There's so much beauty out there. I know that we've had a lot of horror, but don't forget to, to stop every now and again and re remember and realize that there are still 
so much beauty out in the world. And there is a lot we as people are accomplishing, despite all these setbacks, that is worth noting. 